As Daring Dude trekked through the tropical jungle, the wet heat sapped her energy and slowed her every step. Hey, I'm Brass Polish, backtracking to season two. Good start. The two biggest personalities in the show. Jip. We see Dash wipe out dozens of times, but I guess the staff thought seeing Pinky obliterate her spine was sufficient. Look at this! The impact caused Rainbow to pass out! This would have been cool to see, and no one was filming it. Sometimes I regret not having a camera on me, but mostly I make it my mission in life to not be a idiot. I get annoyed at people who take pictures and videos of every single sodding thing. But there's always that nasty feeling when you've seen something amazing that you can't replay. Like my friend trying to push open an automatic door and almost tumbling into the store. I've got things I need to do. Well, that all depends on your recovery. Who do you suppose will be managing Ponyville's weather in Rainbow's absence? Oh, oh no. <laughs> Just like a spider! Did the crash somehow give her super duper spider powers? No, but it might have given you super duper spider powers. It's not so bad, Rainbow Dash. I bet the chow in here is hooked looking good. And look, you have a roommate! When I first saw this episode, I thought this pony would serve a purpose. Like maybe he was the author of Daring Do. And he spent all of his time being a mobile watching Rainbow Dash enjoy his work, and he would be the one to expose her love of reading to her friends. Didn't happen. And I love being surprised by this show. I am not reading. It's undeniably, unquestionably, uncool. When I reached the age where compulsory reading was all the vogue, my dad tried to get me to read The Hobbit, but I could not get past chapter one. I found it so goddamn boring. Then he shoved Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone in my face, and that went much better. Got through the whole thing and loved it. Though, I did turn to the Stephen Fry audiobooks for the rest of the series. The Jim Dale ones suck cactus dick. Careful, Rainbow, you'll knock the asbestos out of the ceiling. Good thing Rainbow Dash didn't take Applejack's bet. Gelatin, pomegranate juice, and mushy peas. Ugh, I'd probably eat my hoof, never mind lick it. To get to the other side! Get it? Don't wake someone up with a punchline, dumbass. What's with the chicken jokes in this episode, anyway? Aw. Go on, read the book. Book, 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 book. Oh, crap. No more chicken jokes. <sighs> this is what happened to me. I was bored, so I caved into my curiosity, watched the Nightmare Moon two-parter, came away loving it, and spent the rest of the summer watching seasons 1 to 3 and Equestria Girls. I felt weird for the first few months, but uh, after that I've been having too much fun with the show to care what people think of me. The transition from skepticism to fanaticism is portrayed brilliantly here. Had injured her wing, yet all of these distracting noises were not enough to- I've heard people say they thought Daring Do looks like Rainbow Dash recolored because Rainbow's imagining the scenes and is inserting herself into the story, but Daring was on the cover of the book. Why was there so much confusion when Daring Don't came about? One, two, three, four, five, six, six seconds. Perfect fine. Safely landing on the other side. I hate to admit it to myself. And would really hate to admit it to my friends, but... I love this show! I... Uh... I love ponies! I'm a brony! This scene looks more or less like every Indiana Jones homage or parody I've ever seen. I, uh, haven't seen any actual ones. Hit Daring Do as she peered into the dimly lit entrance of Dimly lit? Those torches and skylights are brightening the place like mad. All that's missing is a neon sign. Are those blades detachable? Can those axes be converted to sledgehammers? Those arrows must be duller than Appaloosa's most wanted. Celestia's on a bender again. I'm seeing double. 
Mind the bedpan. We brought your favorite board game. Have you seen the old-timey box cover of Battleship? I found it at a convention and gave it to my brother for Christmas, and he cracked up. <laughs> no, no, you first. Uh, Cloud Three. Oh sh! You. Oh, they won't let us hear her swear either. Better than Treehouse, though. The pussies. Whoa! You found my seagull. Here's an anecdote for you. One time at the beach, I was feeding these two seagulls because, well, I find seagulls entertaining. One in particular. And one kept chasing off the other and hogging all the food. When my mom was talking about it, she referred to the aggressive one as he and the victimized one as she. About as subtle as a root canal. As is Rainbow Dash. Now this is dimly lit. And yet Rainbow Dash seems to have no trouble reading in the dark. That carpet is hideous. I ain't stepping on that. You be the canary, Boulder. Why don't you try tossing a rock onto each animal and see which one doesn't trigger a barrage of arrows? There's only six animal types on that floor, and you've got plenty of rocks there to throw. This is video game logic. That's a funny image, isn't it? A My Little Pony video game where you gotta solve a puzzle about animals that eat other animals so you don't end up on the menu yourself. I think the reason people freak out when they see mice or rats running around on the floor is because they're afraid to step on them. That's where that image of people standing on chairs comes from. I don't really understand it. They don't move as fast as frogs do. I've caught a number of rats in my house before. One was hiding in the piano. You know how I got him out? I played a tune. I have no musical talent. That rat came running out of the piano holding his ears. 